I am ready, sir. You tell me when. Good evening, esports fans. This is Banging on My Drums, joined in the Caster's Boot tonight by Static and Bobinator to bring you another exciting installment of the FIMU Alpha Overwatch League. Tonight's contest will show Bjorn again facing down Circle City Cobra Crew. Both teams very high in the standings right now, and Circle City looking to take back that first place spot that was recently taken from them by Fox and the Hounds, and Bjorn again sitting right behind them with an almost identical map record and a identical match record. So the two teams neck and neck here as we enter the final week of the season. It is going to be an exciting contest and we already have the first map. So we should be good to go here. Now we actually already are. It's Nepal time. It's Nepal time. As they say. So, Static, looking at the lineups of these two teams, what sort of predictions have we got for this evening to give to the wonderful folks at home? I think we're going five maps all the way. This is going to be a banger of a match for sure. Excuse me? What do you mean Ramatra isn't here? I fixed that. Oh. Apparently, I did not. Oh, so, uh, ya boy fucked up the lobby. That's okay. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna restart real quick. Traveling to that didn't happen. Initiating match. Okay, so Ramatra now an option. I expect we're going to be seeing some of him out of Omnilus tonight. Omnilus loves playing him. Uh, Slaying Beast, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't play with him as much, so I don't know what sort of... Uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what whether or not he tries to mirror the Ramatra, or if he's going to try and run something to just walk past him, since Ramatra doesn't really have anything in the way of CC, aside from his 1E e ability, but even that isn't nearly as devastating as, say, an Orisa Spear or a Sigma Rock or a Reinhardt Charge. So lots of interesting little question marks there. We see the Ana Zen coming out to support Omnilus on the Ramatra. There's definitely the move for sure. And here we go. Match about to be underway. We're going to see some very exciting brawl action from both teams. As Omnilus and company are going to teleport straight on over. We're going to see a Fox and Cumulus looks oh no sorry that that was uh Fox McHughes, I think also did the same thing and he swapped over to the tracer whereas fish is gonna stay on the uh, Symmetra here so we see point presence being fought for Luke is gonna get a nice early pick there on Astros who is gonna get rest by Stekmonst in the back line but fish is gonna take Stekmonst out so they will not last long Omnilus did end up getting shredded there by Astros but it is not quite enough Luke's picking her out of the sky Tobex little with the turret Going to help secure that first point for Bjorn again. Hiya. So a solid first fight there. Very decisive in favor of Bjorn again. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing with this Ramatra is, especially with this recent buff, with the 20% movement speed and Nemesis for him, Hello. it's almost impossible to run away from him unless you have a Lucio, which you see Stack actually swap over here too. So hopefully when, you know, Anos pulls out the big guns and starts punching people, they can just run away now. But uh, we will see how that actually out. A, a big sleep came out there from Luke's. Unfortunately, uh, Slaying Beast got woken pretty much right back up there. So he was not able to survive longer. He's going to just kind of start to push in here with that Ramatra shield not really allowing Omnilus to take a whole lot of space and just having to hang out on point. You see Astros did get picked off by the turret from Tobex Lull. You see Steck in a bad spot, almost getting caught there in the slow field, but he does manage to get out. We see uh, Fox and Cumulus will lift his first palm bomb, and here is Annihilation coming out from Omnilus. He's going to get two, three, and that is another solid fight win for Bjorn again. Only one ult used there, and they still have three in the chamber. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. And that that ult come from Omnilus, it builds so fast. I think the number you can do like 1,300 damage, and that gets your ult, so that's all it takes. So 
it, it came in extremely fast. We've seen early transcendence come from Max Michaels here as well. Maybe a fat finger? I'm gonna call that a fat finger. I, I'm pretty sure he would not have done that otherwise. Oh, oh see, it looks like Slay Beast is gonna jump in. Trying is like, oh have... my. <laughs> it's absolutely huge. The other team just could not walk out. They didn't have the Lucio speed. Slaying Beast gonna get a massive quad kill, and Ostris is gonna finish up. And just in the nick of time, too, 92% capture progress for Bjorn again. What a play by Slaying Beast. When they needed him most, he was there, and he killed He him was. There. And I also want to give some credit to Segmonsa speeding him in so that he could get into the middle of Bjorn again before they had a chance to react and spread out. So they, they really played that extremely well, very coordinated from Circle City Cobra crew. See a lot of see now. on the side of Circle City Cobra crew as well, and just, I mean, about the same on the side of uh, Bjorn again, but one down. No, I say Circle City's got four, Bjorn again's only got two. I mean, Omelas will probably get his pretty soon, so... But they're still down one, and ooh, big pick there by Max Michaels. Oh, down goes Fox Cumulus. The, the Zenyatta Pog. And here comes the Nemesis form, and unfortunately, Omelas did get booped away by Slaying Beast there. And right now, the boop's just allowing Circle City to stick around on point here and create more space, but not for long, as Slaying Beast is discorded and getting shredded. Stek is gonna get slept in purple, and he's gonna have to escape. Fox and Cumulus came back, but not for long, and he did not survive. Stek Monster going down here. He managed to take Stobek, Stobek's little with him, but Asterisk is gonna pop the copy, and it's not gonna be enough as another Annihilation from Omnilus is going to handily allow them to retake that point. And a big sleep from Lukes. That is gonna stop Slaying Beast in his tracks, and round number one goes to Bjorn again. And it was well fought from Circle City, except, especially with that ult from Slaying Beast, but... It's just the discord and the antis and the sleeps from the support line of Jordan is making it really hard for Purple City to really get in there before, you know, by the time they're in there, they're all half dead and then on the list just goes in Nemesis form and punches them all. Yeah, the the, the fact that uh, when Omnilus is in Nemesis form, he can block and basically just take damage for free while getting healed. Yeah. Um, Basic and is nearly impossible to kill when he's holding right click in Nemesis. There is well. no killing this guy. The objective. So, we see now Slaying Beast is going to match the Ramatra here, which I definitely like. And we see. Yeah, just slowing him down is going to be huge. We see Tobexol's turret already going down here, and Slaying Beast getting annihilated quickly. Amelis is going to come in there with an extra pick there and squints down goes Stek Monster. Fish did die in that fight, but it's just Astros by herself. And this is going to be an early fight win for Bjorn again. As the uh, the support's just giving Omnilus the big old pocket. And there's just nothing that Circle City is able to do there. I would like to see Fox and Cumulus swap off the Tracer. I think just I with that Torbjorn turret, I think it's going to make his life a lot harder than it needs to be. I think he'd be much better off on something like Hanzo or even Genji. Just allow him some ability to deal with the turret a little more. Not be so oppressed by it. Especially with the, the places that uh, Tobex Lull has been putting it. It's allowed him to get a lot of value out of it. We see a big slow field coming in there from Slaying Beast as he tries to get the 1v1 here with Omelus. And here comes the Annihilation! Omelus has lots of targets to choose from, and he's just gonna walk right into them. Down goes Astra Slaying Beast, also getting taken out there. And we see in the meantime, Stek Mosso's on point! They forgot about them. <laughs> Almost got back capped there. We uh, had a, a moment of weakness, but they, they just forgot about the point. And Stek Mosso is still alive! He's gonna float around for quite a while before taking the foot of Max Michaels. And, ooh, there goes Fox McCumulus getting big staggered there. That was definitely a situation where he needed to just get out or die, and he chose neither until it was a little bit too late. Now we see another fight. Looks like they're starting to regroup here. I think right now the biggest thing here is Circle City Cobra Crew needs to change their approach a little bit to make something happen. I mean, they, they do have the Kasune here online, and they're going to have the Annihilation coming up soon, so hopefully Slaying Beast can find the same value as Omnis did, but they're kind of going out of the spectrum over here, and the chance comes up in Max Michaels to save Omnis there. So much this Omnis as it was to save the rest of his team while Omnis went in. 
all, all big man. And here it is, Kitsune Rush with Annihilation. The sleep comes out, but unfortunately they woke Slaying Beast up. And he does eventually go down though. Thanks to some quality play from Luke's there. And now it's just Omnibus on point. He got nanoed there, and the nano Ramatra is just oppressive. And here's the Molten Core. Just to try to stop anyone from touching point. And Fox Cumulus is there. He doesn't have much room. And here comes the Blizzard. And another Annihilation coming out, and nobody is able to touch. That is a 2-0 victory for Bjorn again. And let's see. Tonight's first play of the game, as always, brought to you by... Rondo, the Thirst Mutilator, official, unofficial sponsor of the Find Me Alpha Overwatch League. And here it is, that 4K. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, just clean. Absolutely clean. And that that's basically an ace for Slaying Beast right there. I would say so. Love to see it. They, they got the and assist. It works, isn't it? It's so cool. Close enough. So now we're going to be moving on to Hybrid. Which means it's Eichenwald, King's Row, or Midtown are the options. There's a lot you can play on a lot of these maps too, but I would not be surprised just to see the constant Ramatra, especially coming out from the side of Jornigan, just because of how oppressive Omnus is, and his team plays around it very well. So Circle Surgeon needs to come up with something quick if they want to slow this down, because First round was a little bit close, but that second round, there was not much going on competition-wise. Honestly, I think if they're going to mirror the Ramatra, they have to mirror the support line. They have to either they have to either get an Ana, or if they're going to keep the Moira, they have to at least have the Zen, so that they can focus the enemy Ramatra down. Absolutely. And I think that's going to do them a lot of good if they can uh, they can at least sort of mirror the supports as well as the deep as well as the tank because. The, the DPS are certainly no slouches. Fox Pumulus and Atris are no, nothing to sneeze at in terms of players, but I, I think it's a matter of just getting the, the correct team comp to play to beat them at their rock, paper, scissors game. You see, Onalus is going to ban Eichenwald, which leaves Kings Row and Midtown as our options here, and Steck picks Kings to the surprise of literally no one. Yep. Because it wouldn't be Find Me Alpha Overwatch League if we weren't playing King's Row. I honestly don't remember the last time I played King's Row in, in one of these games. I, I will King's say King's that we've been doing a good job this season as a league of not playing King's Row. Mostly because the map rotations force us to not play it. Yeah. So there is that, which I like because it's nice to see other maps. It's nice to see... A little Circuit Royale, a little Watchpoint, a little... We've had seen some great games on Havana. I just played Havana last night. It was it was fun. You know, it's a now good map. Entering Kings you know, it's it's nice to it's nice to have some variety, as they say. And uh, yes, the classic Kings Row, Hype Bus 69, for those of you who remember the famous stream where they did that. 16. All those... Yes. There's just somebody who was streaming just put a little black box over the two so it looked like a 69. And just had it on stream. It was a good time. Good. Ready for battle. So here we go. Slaying Beast's gonna run the Reinhardt here. Never a bad option into Ramatra. Honestly, I think if he's not going to play the Ramatra, this is a good choice. Just walk past him. Just run him over. Because at the end of the day, if you walk past him, there's not a whole lot he can do. Yeah. And I, I like seeing Fox on the Hanzo here. Astros on her trademark Widowmaker. I think we're going to see some disgusting headshots out of her in no time. I question the Brig pick from Steck. I, I understand him wanting to support his Reinhardt, but I think, especially with Squints running the Ana, I think Steck will do a lot better on the Lucio here, as they do, uh, they do play a stinky Lucio. And stinky in the best way possible. Just, like, stank face. Tank base, Lucio. Yes. Do you we think see. Lucio is a Symphonia? Uh, you know, I, I bet he is. It, even though he's from Brazil, you know. Oh, Tomax lol. <laughs> <laughs> the team peg on Slaying Beast is rude, but honestly, like, just rude. Okay, so I was wrong about Steck on the, uh, on the break here. You know, him and Slaying Beast just playing 
kind of almost like a tank duo there. And it worked really well. They were able to just run over Omnilus. And he couldn't do anything about it. And there we go. A very decisive take on first point for Circle City Cobra Crew. Stack will be in the back waiting for their cart to appear. Oh, that pain is going to be terrible. Oh, yeah. He is big caught. He gets purpled. And that is uh, unfortunate and painful. We see Slaying Beast now just taking all kinds of space here. And, you know, I, I said it, and now Fox running the Hanzo. And he's able to deal with the turrets. Honestly, they just, they figured it out, folks. They figured it out. It's going to be really hard for Fish on the Zaps going against the double sniper, trying to take all these angles at the same time. So I'm curious to see if they end up switching, or if they switch to something else to help with the double sniper. But I guess you will see. See, right now, Fox taking a very sharp angle on the far right side here. And, ooh, Astros with a big pick there on Tobex Lull. And right now, uh, the DPS of Bjorn again just having a hard time dealing with that uh, DPS line from Circle City Cobra Crew here. And we see already having the Infrasight out. Almost pops. Oh no, Something Beast didn't walk far enough in front of the shield. Oh, that is unfortunate. I mean, he, he asserted his dominance, and the cart will continue to push forward. Up, oh, Squints. Squints, get back on the cart, Squints. 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 <laughs> Eventually, Astros jumped down. I'm just standing there like, he, nobody was touching the cart. <laughs> and Squints was the closest to it. He's like, get on the cart. They're going to low off. That's okay. I'm going to right now. And dead. Slaying Beat Ooh. is running this lobby right now. Slaying Beast just flattened Tobex a little against the wall. He's going to walk in and just disrespect Max Michaels. Now Luke is going to run away as fast as he can. And now Squint's properly babysitting his cart. As the rest of his team continues to have a bit of a field day here. Omnilus on the Reinhardt, as you said. Definitely like that pick. Ooh, nice pick there by Fox with Cumulus. Taking Tobex a little out of the fight early. Bitch going down. Man, these DPS... On Bjorn again are having a rough time of it. Slaying Beast getting nanoed after he was purpled, and that's just gonna allow him to run right on in there. We see, oh, the both the rides go off. <laughs> Man, this this first point has been a little bit wild, and I kind of love it. And you see, meanwhile, it's just fish, Squints and Asterisk just chilling, chilling on the cart. They've got Ash kind of bothering them, but uh, Squints are just gonna want to touch the. Somebody's got to touch the cart here. Oh no, and there's Bob coming out from Fish there. Unfortunately, they did lose Slay Slaying Beast. So they're probably going to have to reset here. But honestly, if you're Circle City Cobra Crew, this is fine. This is literally the first time since the beginning of the map that they've lost a fight. That was a hell of a first push for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's they, they made it all the, almost all the way to third point in basically one push. So... If you're Circle City Cobra Crew, you were totally fine with this. You could, the map could, no the round could end here. And what a block from Slaying Beast. Wow. Just red Omelus there, didn't really give him a chance. You see a tire coming out now from Tobex Lola. It's going to be absolutely huge defensive effort coming out now from Bjorn again as uh, Slaying Beast and Astros are forced to retreat. And solid plays there. You love to see a big Junkrat play, especially if you're me. Uh, but honestly, just solid plays. Slaying Beast and company now regrouping here. And ooh, Astros with the big picks there on Luke's. That is gonna hurt. Down goes Omnilus before Max Michaels is able to pop the Transcendence. He does manage to save himself here. And there goes the Dragon Strike. Oh, Jeep is actually getting taken up by the Junkrat. And what, what's going on over here? Slaying Beast and, <laughs> and Max Michaels are just like <laughs> standing there, not really killing each other. Just like, oh, hello. Ooh, Omnilus almost had the block there, just having to flash his shield at just the wrong time. Big Purple came out there from Luke's, though, which is going to help him. He's slaying Beast and Company, trying to stall here. Omnilus gets Purple, he does still have the Nano, though, so he's pumping out the damage, and he's going to get slept. Slaying Beast get, wakes him right back up with that Hammer Swing, and down he charges once again. Omnilus getting stunned here. The Nano going on to Slaying Beast here from Squints. Uh, slaying Beast is unfortunately slept right after, not really able to get any value off of that. As the cart still remains contested here. And the Shatter gets blocked again by Slaying Beast. 
Flaming Beast then swing here, but getting caught in the trap of uh, Tobex lull there. And then finally, the cart starts to push forward once again. Stag Monster popping the rally as uh, Fox Cumulus tries to. Or, sorry, it's actually Nisha the Tracer trying to run in. I don't know why I said Fox Cumulus. It's the wrong team. Here, Max Michaels tried to dive in, but doesn't make it. And Slaying Beast <laughs> manages to push back Omnilus, and that is round number one with a little over two minutes in the bank. And what a first round from Circle City. They really turned it around after map one. Yeah, that was absolutely the comeback. And being able to have Slaying Beast play Ryan on this, because it is uh, just and such a good Ryan map, has done a lot for them. And just the double sniper is just destroying this enemy team. Yep, and uh, knowing Asterisk, we are going to see that right back on defense. And, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Absolutely. The real question here is to see how uh, Bjorn again is going to change things on attack here. We see Omnil is going to the Roadhog, which... I wonder if he stays on the... Roadhog is kind of meta now, and I know Omnilus has been playing him a lot and has always liked playing him, but he used to be a kind of a niche pick, so... Oh, no, he's going back. Okay, he's going back to the Rhine. I, I actually kind of wanted to see the Omnilus Hog, I'm not gonna lie. It's, Me too. He's, he's very good, but I think he realized that with the double sniper, it's just not gonna... It's gonna be a little tough for him to get value unless he lands... Just the most ridiculous long-range hooks every single time. Yeah. Three, two, one. Which, realistically, that's hard for anyone. Defend so I like the May pick here out of Tobex Law. I think it's going to make Slaying Beast's life pretty hard. And give Omnilus a lot more latitude to be aggressive here. See the Moira coming out of Luke's. So just the raw healing combined with that. And the Lucy. Oh, no. Luke's getting picked off early by Fox and Cumulus. That is big unfortunate. Tobex Lull with a nice wall, but not quite where he meant to put that. You see Omnilus getting purpled and slept there. Slaying Beast now dives way in, but Omnilus is going to go down. You see Max Michaels and Tobex Lull still here, but Tobex Lull is going to allow him and his support to get out. Actually kind of an interesting play with throwing that wall perpendicular. Yeah. And just a, stopping Slaying Beast from fitting through that little corner. Ooh, and to Tobex Lull, unfortunately, you just you cannot peek this team. If you're gonna go in, you have to commit, and ooh, Fish going down there to a well-placed headshot. That is going to hurt. Right now, just gotta stick and spawn, wait till all five of you are back, and then start from scratch. You see Tobex Lull once again poking here. And she's gotta watch out, because Fox and Cumulus will laser him if he's not careful. We see now we've got Soldier 76 coming out from Fish, and it looks like Armless and company are gonna take another path here, which I definitely get why because it allows his team to avoid a lot of these long sight lines that were giving them so much trouble. So this is actually, this is a good play for Bjorn again right now. We do see the, uh, already have the Widow all coming out, but now almost the company are just gonna rotate right around and they're on point. So they just, they did the thing they had to do. They dealt with the long sight lines. Fox Cumulus gets annihilated there, but the massive shatter coming out from Slaying Beast it's going to be a little bit more than what they were hoping for here. We see Slaying Beast just bullying Omnilus right now. As he tries to swing on him, but Swins goes down. This is just Slaying Beast by himself here. So it's been a long, scrappy fight, but it looks like Bjorn again is going to succeed and come out on top here as Fish gets back. Pumping those legs. It was a good effort from Slaying Beast, but it just got caught out alone. It was a nice pattern, but just didn't follow up on it because there wasn't really anybody there. Moving yep. to the second point is going to be a little bit tougher for the cyclist. Uh, once you get around the first corner, it's kind of a pain, but... And yeah, it's a Ooh, now big shatter coming out from Omelus here. That's going to get three. Stek Monster actually calling it four because he got annihilated immediately with that hammer damage. And that is a solid team wipe for Omelus. Pretty much single-handed there. Absolutely. I mean, little, little help there from Tobex a little, but... Right now, with Omnilus and company are getting very aggressive here, which I like to see. And um, Circle City kind of playing on their back foot here. We've still got only one person on cart, that being Luke's. So the only support is going to be Max Michaels here in Lucio. As the rest of Circle City does get back to final 
the final part of uh, the second point here. We see Onwes and company are going to wrap back around here. Looks like they're going to try and regroup with Luke's, who is on cart right now. They actually, they, oh, they all left cart for a second. And here comes the rally, but Steg wants to get shut down by the Helix Rockets of Fish. Omnilus is going to pin Squints in the back line in the meantime. Here comes the Coalescence from Luke's, and that's going to shatter. It's going to not going to get Luke's, thankfully. So even though it does get Omnilus and a couple others, Luke's is just going to laser beam people on down here. Down goes Asterisk and another solid team fight for Bjorn again. This is a very different team than we were seeing in the first round here. I'm loving the comeback. Yeah, I think you can get it, the shadow there from Sling Beast, and you were already down too, so if I, if I was him, I would want that back, but, I mean, it's Ryan, so I mean, you can build it up pretty quick with just these random fire strikes, and I'm just gonna have another one on, he's probably looking for it here soon. Oh, he's got it, and it's just a matter of uh, what they're gonna use me for. And we see the big blizzard coming out here from Tobex. Lol, two go down already. Slaying Beast is the third. And it's just Asterisk trying to survive here with a little help from good old Steck on the Mercy. Now Omelus just bullying her into the wall. And Steck Monster getting uh, actually crit killed there by Max Michaels. Here comes Omnilus, he's going all the way up into the enemy oh, team spot. He got slept! Oh man, what a play by Squints. We see Max Michaels pops the sound barrier, and now Fish is gonna pop that attack visor. It's just Slaying Beast on point. Omnilus is gonna come back, and that's gonna take Slaying Beast out of the fight. And here we go with 307 to go. What a round. I really this this one's gonna be a good one, folks. I can feel it. Oh, absolutely. This is, we've got a series on our hands. We do, and you absolutely love to see it. Now, putting Circle City Cobra Crew back onto the attack. I think the real question here is to see what they can do differently to try and deal with the the May from Tobex Lull, because I imagine they're going to bring that back out on defense. Or at least, if I was Bjorn again, I absolutely would be doing that. Ready Looks like uh, Fox and Astra is going to stick with their same uh, DPS here, which isn't bad for first point. <laughs> I like that Tobex back in Mage Hale, where he belongs. <laughs> I, I played a whole season with him, and uh, that was that was the thing. It was just, while we're playing May, we got to put Toby in. He's the one. Thick thighs. <laughs> that is true. As Lucas says, thick thighs save lives. That is a never truer phrase that's been spoken this evening. So here we go. Fox, Mcumulus, and Asterisk are going to run their same double sniper, which I definitely don't hate, but I just wonder if... Uh, yeah, Tobex Lil is looking for it. Yep. And see, that's what I was afraid of, is that it was going to force them to not use that angle the way they wanted to. And I think they may need to change something up here a little bit. Because right now, Slaying Beast and... Uh, Steck Monster just getting abused by this May. Even without the full freeze, Stomulus already has a solid pick there on Fox with Cumulus, and now Slaying Beast caught out alone. He missed the charge on Omnilus, and that is going to be a full team fight. Almost a full team fight, but as a solid fight win. And Tobex Lull just going to block off that doorway for good measure at this point. Now, Circle City already 40 seconds down here, almost a minute, and they have gotta change something up and soon I really would like to see a Lucio out of stack here. I, I think the quantity of healing is not the issue. Oh, okay. Big pick on Tobex lol. That is going to help them a ton. But Omnilus with the shatter takes out Squid. Stack Fox gets followed up on. But uh, Astros and Slay Beast are there to respond. Fox McCubulus can take out Fish. Grabbing victory from the jaws of defeat there. 54 seconds on the clock. And it looks like Circle City will be able to at least get some point progress, if not capture this first objective here. So, a very scrappy fight, but a solid effort coming through here from Slaying Beast and Company. Fish is gonna make. Oh! Oh man. He almost made it. It was like frames away from touching the point. And oh, that is another huge wipe taking. Oh no, Max Michaels managed to get the pick on Asterisk. That is huge for uh, Bjorn again. And now he's stuck trying to get out. And I don't know if he's going to be able to. And, oh man, that is 
That is unfortunate. It was, it was a hero play, but then he ended up kind of staggering himself. And that is not what you want when you only have 10 seconds to go and you're in overtime here. They need to stop Circle City from getting any more capture progress here. And it's only one fight they have to win. So the longer they draw that out, the worse it is for them. See, Slaying Beast... Slay, Slaying Beast is about to try something cheeky. I can see... Or it looks like he was going to... Okay. Okay, the... Combination coal and dragons, I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, the big shattered Omelus is purple and down he goes. Tobex also getting taken out. Lucas tried to pop the coal essence himself, I think, but just couldn't quite make it happen. And another team wipe here for Circle City Cobra Crew. Just not really uh, being stopped by much of anything right now, even with the May. Once again, Omnilus and company are going to regroup here. Try and make something happen here on this third point. I don't think Omnilus... No, he will not make it to stall second point. So he will hold this corner here. As he has Shatter coming up very soon. We've got Blizzard coming up on... Oh, that's a big pick there on Fox McCumulus. That is going to help a lot. And here comes the Nano on the Slaying Beast. He's going to get walled off by the May. He's going to get solo shattered. He's still alive, though, because of all the healing he has from that Nano. And we see right, he just did not go down. Here's the blizzard. Slaying Beast is right in the middle of it, and down he goes, followed by the attack visor. It's gonna stop Foxy Cumulus being able to do much there. Down as he had to recall, and down he goes. And in overtime, the beat comes out, and that is the end of round number three. It took absolutely every resource they had to shut down Slaying Beast there, and he was really close uh, to another shatter as well, but he got slept, anti shattered, made frozen. Lucio boobed everything in the arsenal was used on this guy, so it, uh, it's not just a the uh, all from Circle City. Yeah, the the uh, the kitchen sink strategy, as they call yep. it. And here we go, round number four. And Omnilus and company have to match that second point capture, and they've got an extra minute to do it. So as far as the odds being in their favor, I'd say they definitely are. They've got the they've got the time bank. It's just going to be a question of making the right team plays here. We see fish going over to Torbjorn. That has to be a meme. I, I, at the very least, me personally, I don't believe in attack Torbjorn, especially on payload maps. That is a uh, what what I would call a questionable call. I'm not saying it can't work. I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying it's very difficult, and I don't recommend it. But hey, you never know. Maybe he's secretly a Torb uh, Masters player that we don't know. Maybe. Three, two, Looks like he's going to stay on it. One. Yeah, he's doing it. He is going to play his team's namesake here as we go into round number four. Omelus and company attempting to grab a, victor a second victory here in map number two. You see already getting the Sonic Arrow out there from Fox Cumulus, so everybody knows exactly where they are. Again, taking the smart pathing here, just doing that first time around, not letting those snipers have all that long sideline, all those angles that they would normally have. We see Tobex all popping the Maywall. That is very clever. And that is going to allow them all to just walk right over and get straight to point here. Down goes Asterisk again to an icicle to the face from Tobex. Lol, that is got to hurt. Omelus and company are just in here swinging away. Omelus going to dive a little bit far into the back line of Circle City, and down he goes. See no actual uh, ticks yet for uh, Bjorn again, and they are going to have to back out here, shaving about a minute. Actually, a little, now it's officially a minute off of their time bank here as Omnilus responds. And oh man, he went in way deep there. Max Michaels did follow him, but right now the rest of his team's still trying to catch up here. Tobex all getting in position. And it looks like he's going to kind of poke at Astris again there over behind the hotel as Fish is in there with the turret. Trying to deal with some of this high ground, and Max Michael's getting picked off. So that is going to really hurt for Bjorn again, as Astros takes out Tobex Lull as well. The Coalescence just isn't enough. And here's the shatter from Omelus that might actually be wrong. The Coalescence may have kept him in the fight. Fish is going to take out Astros after taking out Fox and Cumulus. The shatter comes back here from Slaying Beast, as Neck Monster pumps the Coalescence of their own. Down goes Omelus. Fish is out of the fight, and a solid fight win for a Circle City Cobra crew. It's just Luke's hiding back there with Max Michaels. Oh no, I thought he was in the hotel. Never mind, he's behind the hotel. 
And look at that, just a minute and 10 seconds left to go here. And as of right now, Bjorn again has yet to cap any amount of Objective A here. So they are, ooh, and a big headshot there from Asterisk on Fish. That is going to make that push very difficult. Brondles and company, they've got one, maybe two more fights here at this point. Depending on how quickly they lose the first one, if they do lose it. Otherwise, we are in last fight territory. There goes Fox with Cumulus, but he's going to get res immediately by Squints. Here comes the Infrasight from Asterisk, takes Fish's turret out of the fight. Here comes the Dragon Strike and takes out Luke's almost immediately. He didn't even see it coming, I don't think. And Omnilus manages to path himself all the way around, but he is basically alone here. Squint's going to get taken out by Tobex Lull. Meanwhile, Slaying Beast is just harassing the backline of Bjorn again. He is going to go down after getting frozen in the blizzard there. Down goes Stegmonson into Fish's turret. It's just fucking Cumulus, but he does take out... Omnilus, he goes down to Luke's though, and now it's just Astros on point. She's not gonna be able to get any picks there. Luke's gonna give her the big ol' suck. And just in the nick of time, it looks like Bjorn again is going to successfully capture the first objective here, and now we are into overtime. Once again, this map, regardless of who wins, is going to be down to the wire, folks. This is two titans of Overwatch 2 Season 1, and Tobex Lull with another headshot on Asterisk. He's just got her number right now with these icicles. It is just devastating, and a big wall there. I think he meant to put that in front of Slaying Beast, but Slaying Beast backed up just in the nick of time. That is big for him, keeping himself in that fight in overtime here. You see Slay, you see once again, uh, oh, Tobex Lull trying to get cheeky there and get a little bit of a flank onto Steck but they managed to notice him. So nothing happening there. Oh, Omnilus absolutely... He wanted that flank shatter, but Slaying Beast wasn't going to take the bait. Oh it's massive! It's at least a four-man! He's going to pin stack all the way into the back line. The coalescence from Luke's comes out. It's going to allow Omnilus to stay front and center. Oh, no! Slaying Beast tried to pop the shatter, but he didn't get it off. Squints gets the res off, but she that is going to be his life for it. Down goes Slaying Beast with some help from the turret. This Dragon Strike comes out from Fox McCumulus as he gets bullied by Omnilus here. And the card's going to continue to trundle forward. We see Stegmasa coming out with the Coalesce as he's getting right out of it into the main wall of Tobex Lull. And with nobody left on point, that is going to be it for overtime. Second map going to Bjorn again. What a photo finish, folks. What a map. That was as we expected it to be. An amazing match and play the game. The charge into the shatter. Just, instead of finishing the charge, just used it to get away from Slaying Beast as he couldn't block it. What a just massive 5,000 IQ plays. Absolutely. Okay, and with that, we now get to do a little swiggity swap of the teams here and it's time for some escort action where our options are going to be Junkertown, Route 66, and Dorado. It's going to be interesting to see what they pick. I don't expect a lot of... I wouldn't expect Dorado just because we haven't seen any real like dive comps from either of these teams, at least tonight, but... It is definitely something that could be pulled out, or they could just try to make the Rhine or the Ramatra continue to work. Yeah, I mean, honestly, especially if you're if you're Obelisk right now, running the Ramatra is always a good time, but I think depending on which map they end up getting, like, if it's Dorado, that's a pretty hard map for uh, for anybody to run, uh, run Ramatra on, yeah. at least in my opinion. You see, we're going to get some movement around here. Fish moving to tank. Omnilus going to swap onto DPS here. And Omnilus is going to ban Junkertown, which means the options are Route 66 or Dorado. Now, I don't know Fish's hero pool too well because he's new to the league. But we're going to take a quick look here. And it looks like he's got a pretty decent amount of hours on... Uh... Wrecking Ball, actually. Hey. And then Reinhardt and Sigma. So, I'll be curious if they pull... Oh, they picked Route 66. Okay. Okay, Steck. I see you. 
I like it. It's not a map we see very often. And, uh, yeah, I honestly, the Wrecking Ball on Route 66 could be fun to watch. Because that's definitely a map that he can do pretty well on. Even with the fact that he's not so great overall as a tank right now. But I think he's at least in a slightly better place than he was, maybe. Maybe Especially... a little bit. With the right supports, I think you can make him work on some maps. And I think this could be the one where uh, you could make the Wrecking Ball viable. All right. Well, that being said, we've got the R from Circle City Cobra Crew just waiting on Omnilus to give us his ready signal. And then we'll head on down to, uh, I assume it's somewhere in Oklahoma. I think that's where Route 66 is. Is it? I actually don't know. Where is... Or, or, is, it, is, or is it Texas? It's somewhere in the south. I know that much. It goes from uh, Arizona through New Mexico, through Texas, through Oklahoma, through Missouri. Oh, so it could be any of those states. Yeah. So you're still right. I'm going to say it's Texas because that makes the most sense considering Cassidy and Ash's accents. That's true. But other, and also the giant Murica truck at the end of the map. Murica. Murica. Big Murica. And Linda Mood saying in chat, I feel like Ball either feeds his brains out or is annoying as fuck. Well, um, I mean, you could be doing both simultaneously. And oh, I almost forgot. And Caster says one nice thing about Shaka Khan. Um, the man has a very soothing voice. This I don't know if any of, any of you have played with him enough. His voice is soothing. <laughs> Annoy your teammates by feeding your brains out. I mean, listen. Um, <coughs> Iron Brew. Uh, cough, cough. <laughs> Traveling to Route 66. Anyway, here we go. Route 66. Another exciting contest in the wings for us here. We get started over at the Panorama Diner. And the, of course, exploded train that this map is so very famous for. Whatever the origin happened. story of Bob and Echo, technically. Well, right. Ash and Echo, I suppose, where we first saw... The two of them first uh, featured. And, uh, yep, there it is. Fish is on the wrecking ball. Yep. Slaying Beast is going to start off with the hog. Fuck, he was running the Pharah. That's a new one. I haven't really seen him play that much this season. So, uh, I'm curious to see how that goes. We got Omnilus on the Sojourn. So, Fox McCumulus might find himself switching sooner than later. Oh, Slang Beast on the Roadhog. So if Fish stays on the ball, it's gonna, it's gonna that's do gonna, for that. Yeah, it, it, if, if he stays on the ball, that's gonna make his life very hard against Three, the Roadhog. Two, one. We see Tobex all on the fair. Omnilus is gonna run the Junkrat. Something I never thought I'd hear myself say in all my years of casting for this league. Omnilus on the Junkrat. I mean, listen, Junkrat's strong, especially right now for some reason. But here we are. First fight already underway. Fish getting some nice slams here. Playing Beast hasn't really abused him too much yet, but it's just a matter of time before we see... Ooh, Fox Cumulus winning that initial duel there on the Pharah. And ooh, there he goes. He gets lasered down with some help from Stack Monster. <laughs> Even Fish admitting he got blown up pretty hard there. Fox McFarah is feast or famine. Wow, Lindemood over here just with the, with the pretty brutal takes on somebody I know he's spent quite a few uh, quite a few nights gaming with. Well, here we go. Ooh, Slaying Beast getting shredded now. So the, the one weakness that both these tanks have in common is that they don't really have shields. So either way, it's going to be Damage Sponge City. And ooh, Omelus getting picked off there, but Fox with Cumulus is going to go down as well. So again, we've got some even trades here coming out between Circle City and Bjorn again right now. Fish, no, sorry, no, Squids is going to get the res on Astros here as Tobex Lull trying to create some space for his team without his tank. And right now, Astros being able to uh, push him back there. We see Fish now getting back into the high ground. Just waiting for their tank. Oh no, Slaying Beast is back. We see a nice little conch rocket there coming out from Tobex Lull trying to clear off that gas station. Right now, it's just Fish kind of peppering them from one side. The cart is not actually moving anywhere. 
received. And here comes a coalescence from Stack Monster now to help start the engage here. Slaying Beast walks forward, and pretty much all of Bjorn again is going to have to run right back. And Fox Accumulus winning the aerial battle. He's going to take out two, even though he does get shredded by Max Michaels with the balls to the face. He does manage to make good use of that barrage. And with two minutes to go here, Circle City Cobra Crew sitting quite nicely in. Uh, I don't know if Fish wanted to do that. I don't. I didn't see it happen. I just saw him in the kill feed, and I was like, "Huh." He rolled all the way back to spawn and then fell off the map. Oops. I spawned, so. Big oof. I, I really hope. I hope we caught that on camera. Meanwhile, his team's got five alts. Yeah. I mean, they, they can press Q and at least win this fight, if nothing else. Oh, we see a big sleep there. Slaying beast and oh my god, the point blank barrage. Amelis is gonna follow up there with the. High noon, and then Fox McCube was getting stuck and exploded, and there it is. Three, uh, four, no, actually, no, they only used two ults. They managed to win that with just Deadeye and Barrage. So, good job to Pjorn again for not, uh, not, uh, overdoing it. We've got a minute to go here. Slaying Beast is going to be able to touch. You see Luke is missing that sleep. That is unfortunate, but Slaying Beast purple and just annihilated. We see Fit. Astros tried to come in on the Wrecking Ball herself, but not really able to stall for long. But that minefield from Fish there, that is going to solidify first objective capture for Bjorn again. We get into the second phase here. Looks like we see Slaying Beast swapping onto the Arisa now, which I definitely do not hate against the ball here as well. The, realistically, I don't think I, really, I don't think I saw Slaying Beast getting too many hook kills. Honestly, if this is what you're comfortable on, make it, you know, just do your thing. See Fish right now getting harassed by Fox and Cumulus. Dealing a ton of damage here. And Kovac's a little not trying to set up the uh, pirate ship of sorts, but Astros is going to shut that down in short order with some help from Slaying Beast there. And now just cutting off a lot of angles here. Slaying Beast running into the back line. That's going to be both Luke's and Omelus out of the fight. The turret is getting set back up. But right now, it's just Fish back there in the garage, and he is getting body blocked into oblivion, just not being allowed to escape. He finally does manage it. Max Michaels getting taken out of the fight there late, and now, ooh, even later, is Tobex lull. And that has got to hurt. Solid fight win there for Circle City. Absolutely, and you're going to have the barrage coming up again, as well as the bout, so uh, as soon as they walk through here, you can just barrage them, and then it's a full another reset. You'll have the trance to kind of counter it, but that's if Max Michael's going to react. Realistically, even if he does, it won't necessarily save everyone, so Fox will at the very least get some value out of it. Ooh, an early pick there on Omnilus. That is going to be huge for getting that barrage off. But we see right now, Bjorn again is just so spread out. He's just going to solo all Tobex Lull. And honestly, I respect it. As a fair player, having to deal with the Torb turret, like, fine. You know? Oh, big sleep there from Luke's. It's gonna allow Fish to dive in, but he just gets exploded. As Tobex Lull and Company trying to make it back here, but right now, Slaying Beast, the help from that uh, coalescence there is just unstoppable here. Down goes Tobex Lull. Fox McCumulus just having a field day here on this Pharah right now. Just bullying Omelus and eventually does get picked with some help from Fish. But that is only a minute left to go here, so a lot of time being killed here by Circle City Cobra Crew doing a good job of just not allowing any additional card progress. Here we go, Fox Cumulus is going to grab some high ground here. Here comes the Tack Visor. Um, Astros is his first target, followed by Squints. No res going to happen there. That is a very solid player. Omnilus, that is going to wipe just about everybody except Stek Masta is the last one to touch. And they are not able to do much here. Fox McCumulus is still alive, but he is going to have to hang on and live to fight another day as he is not going to be able to get any value in a 1v5. It is going to be a little bit of a chore trying to play fair. They don't really have to play Oh man, Omnilus getting taken out and Astros getting immediately blown up out of her ult. Just the, po the positioning there being very unfortunate. You're slaying Beast with another... Oh, he's going to see if he can get anyone. He does not because Max Michaels was there to pop Transcendence and stop that ult. 
So unfortunately, he will not get two Pachis tonight, at least not yet. And ooh, the trade there from Fox Pecumulus. We see Slaying Beast did get picked off there, so right now it's just Astros on point trying to stall. Stekmos is out of the fight. Astros going to survive as long as she can, but it probably won't be very long. It is into overtime here, but they are still going to get second capture point. So here we are, final phase. I imagine we're going to be seeing people swapping off of the forest pretty soon because this third inside point is just terrible for her. It's such a low ceiling. Honestly, if Slaying Beast can get his ult quick enough, I would love to see him combo with Fox. It would be disgusting if he does. But Fox is going to die. Does manage to trade for Omnilus there. All right, now the card's still moving forward here. Slaying Beast is gonna actually completely negate Tobex Lil's ult with that E, what a play. Just walking straight forward and saying, no you don't, not today. And Fish is there in the back line of uh, Bjorn again, just trying to make something happen. And unfortunately, Slaying Beast in the back line of, uh, I'm sorry, Bjorn again, not the uh, Circle City, uh, Fish in the back line of Circle City, but yes. Both tanks are split off from the rest of their teams. Fight kind of at a stalemate here as Fish trying to make something happen. Fox Pecumulus is still in it. Oh, not for long. He was discorded and Luke's going to help finish him off. Slaying Beast now back there. We see the sleep gets missed here. And Slaying Beast trying to make something happen here. Here comes the minefield from Fish. It's going to once again allow a little more card progress that nobody can really get in there to touch. And now Slaying Beast finally able to touch the card here. He's there, it's overtime, he's trying to make something happen. Max Michaels goes down, that's going to be huge. A lot of relief there, not having the Discord Orb. Here comes another attack visor for Omelos, he gets Nano 2. Here comes the Terra Surge, he's not gonna get anyone immediately, but he does follow up on it and take out Omelos. We can see Fox and Cumulus takes out Tobex Lull. That turret's still up, but not for long, it's just Fish on point by himself, trying to make something happen here. You see Max Michaels is able to make it back, but he does get Dynamite, so he has to go run and grab that health pack. Meanwhile, it's just Fish hanging on for dear, sweet life as he tries to get keep the fight alive. Max Michaels floats his very slow way back, and it's like they all forgot about him except for Steck. <laughs> and that is the end of round number one. Yeah, Max Michaels was just chilling on the cart there, and no one really cared except for, except for Steck. Yeah, yeah, he floated up so slowly, he just kind of stood there, and nobody looked at him, and then Steck was like, Oh, hi, you're dying now. <laughs> We've, we've seen that a couple of times tonight, where somebody from one team or another just kind of forgets that the card exists. Yeah. The card can wait. I want to kill stuff first. L Linda saying, bruh, if Max had pulled that off, that honestly, that would have been the funniest thing I've seen in this league all season. If he had somehow managed to back cap right in front of their eyes, I, I don't think anyone would have ever let uh, Bjorn again live that down if Max Michaels had managed to do that. Oh, sorry, no, they, they wouldn't have let Circle City live that down if Max Michaels had pulled that off. <laughs> Max had realized he was in the fight. <laughs> I mean, listen, either way, that is almost, yes, Linda, almost the heist of the century. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Omnilus once again swapping over to the Sojourn here on defense, which I definitely like against the double flyers. Slaying Beast on the Orisa here. Let's see what kind of defense Bjorn again is going to mount. Fish still on the ball. Looks like he's going to try and get himself a nice cheeky pile driver right out of the gate. And there goes Fox Cumulus. The aerial battle will begin here. As Tobex Old now has a pocket in the form of Max Michaels on the Mercy here. And, ooh, Astros going down early there, thanks to Fish, so big pick to start things off. Slaying Beast once again, very far in front of his team. He does pick off Omelus, but he will die for it. So unfortunately, not a whole lot that his team can do. That being uh, Slaying Beast's team here. Fox Cumulus does finish off Tobex a little after Max Michaels res Omelus. So Omelus did manage to get back into the fight, but it's not gonna be for, uh, whole lot of time here as he, his team still does have to back up and regroup see now fish once again getting ready to dive in here and he's gonna pile drive that high ground man just to get a couple in that one slaying beast here on the cart trying to get some more forward progress and just bully this hamster away from them 
We see right now just having a very hard time, especially with that Pharah being in the air and causing so much trouble. We see Fox Accumulus trying to deal with it, but those aerial dogfights are always so difficult. And here, once again, Fish diving in. This fight just continuing slowly, but surely Astro's gonna get a pick there on Luke's. Omnilus going down, trading with Slaying Beast. The res comes out from Squints. It's gonna bring Slaying Beast back into the fight. Max Michaels is alive, is, is, or sorry, is going down as well here. So Tovex lol without his Mercy Pocket for now, and he's gonna have to try and get out if he can. It looks like he will be able to. Fish is gonna take some damage on the way out. As Fox McCumulus and Asterisk bully him away. And now the cart is gonna just kinda squeeze on forward here. And you'll have the ooh, I, nice early pick. But you'll have the mine fish not Oh, a big pick there by Stek though, taking Omelus out of the fight. Omelus getting rezzed by Max Michaels. And Squints rezzing Asterisk, so we're back to pretty much keeping strength here. Here comes the minefield onto the point. There is still a bit of a spot room. Someone could contest, but Slaying Beast not able to contest for long, quite long enough to stop Tobex Lull's ult from killing him. We see Fox and Cumulus goes down. Fish coming in here to stop Asterisk. It looks like his team will manage it here. With a minute and 41. Ooh, I, I saw that, Lucas. I saw that crouch. You're not slick. You're not slick. They're friends. They know each other. <laughs> no, now he's trying to deny it. That's just. That's classic. He's just lying. <laughs> Open Isn't gonna be able to find out if Fox and Cumulus takes Luke's out right no. after. Yeah, that was unfortunate. The Omelus just... It's both DPS. has a big shreddage. We see Swins going down. Fox and Cumulus... ...did go down there. And Omelus just having a absolute field day here. Just killed all five there. What a play. And that is going to really hurt for Circle City Cobra Crew. They've got... ...probably one push left here. Maybe two. More like one, yeah, because it's only 40 seconds, so... It is looking... Which I definitely like. It's going to help his team deal with these uh, aerial heroes that are causing so much trouble. And down goes Fish. That's the first time he's died in a while. See, Omelus getting the early pick there on Fox and Cumulus with the railgun to the face. That has got to hurt. You know, so you got to appreciate the level of accuracy that takes. And Astra's popping the barrage while in copy form here. Slaying Beast going to get a nice pick there. Max Mike was getting followed up on by Slaying Beast. So it looks like the triple flyers, or double flyers, I guess, but different flyers, is the move here. Fish dives in. He's going to stall for as long as he absolutely can. It's overtime now, but the rest of his team is pretty far away. And that is going to be a pick, and that is a... A capture for Circle City here. He's going to objective number two. Another two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. And things are still happening, folks. This is not over yet. Not by any means. See Slaying Beast now on the D.Va. Like you pointed out there earlier, Sec. That is going to help his team out a lot with all the spam damage that is coming towards them. What a sleep. And here comes the bomb from Slaying Beast, which he had already. Unfortunately, did not get anyone. But the minefield is going to come out here from Fish. Slaying Beast is caught behind it. He's not able to get the progress that he wanted to. Amal is getting another pick there in Fox with Cumulus. And now it's just Steck trapped in this little corner here between Fish and Omnilus. And he's going to just get bullied. Poor Steck, they just got bullied into oblivion. Omnilus did technically die for it, but... Gets res right away there by Max Michaels. A minute and 27 to go in round number two. Fish once again diving in, getting a nice little pile driver there. Fox Cumulus missing the stick and getting killed for it. That has got to hurt. Tobex will take it, taken out by Slaying Beast there, but Luke's with another pick on Asterisk. I didn't see if he teabagged that time, but I'm going to 100% believe that he did. Slaying Beast, that was an interesting little maneuver he just did there. Just a little bit of the, you know, as they as the as the saying goes. Yes. See, Fox Cumulus up there on the high ground, trying to harass these supports right now, just bullying the mercy. with slaying beast going down in the meantime here. Uh, just Fox Cumulus up there, and Farah's looking at him now. 
Oh no, Tobexel actually got taken out there by Fox Cumulus, so these uh this new damage change for Tracer, or was it the spread change? I forget, but it, it makes Tracer a lot more viable against Pharaoh, so definitely do not hate it. See Slaying Beast in there going in, trying to clear the high ground, but Fish is there standing on the cart. The barrage coming out from Tobex Lull, it takes out Asterisk, but he goes down. Fox Cumulus also out of the fight. Fish is there on point contesting. It's Slaying Beast and Squints there, trying to make something happen there. Despite the Kitsune rush, you see Fish still has his ult. Here comes the bomb from Slaying Beast. It's gonna take out Max Michaels, but Squints did go down there. Fox Cumulus is gonna jump back in there. He's gonna take Omelus out of the fight. And as of right now, that's just Fish, and he is going to just roll on out of there. Overtime situation right now for both teams, so they've got a one fight left here, basically. And if Circle City can pull this off, they'll be able to get to the third point. But that's all that it separates Bjorn again between victory and the end of the... Between them and victory right now is this one fight here. And right now, Slaying Beast just jumping into the faces of Bjorn again here inside this area near the spawn. And Max Michael's going to get bullied. And Slaying Beast is asleep there on the high ground, but it doesn't matter because the rest of his team is there to go ahead and push that card forward, taking Fish out of the fight. And that is objective number two, once again captured just in the nick of time here. And oh, Tobex Lull getting shredded there by Fox Cumulus Tracer. A minute and 20 seconds to go. And the cart did not make it all the way to first to final capture point here. So Circle City could very well win this here if they're able to push the cart to the same spot here. Here comes the uh, Pulse Bomb. It's not able to get a kill. Fish just kind of shrugs that off. Slaying Beast is going to get pretty low, so he's going to have to get out. He swings on the Lucio now. Slaying Beast getting demacked here, so that is going to be a huge disadvantage. So Max Michaels is getting taken out of the fight. He's solidly by Fox Cumulus taking Omelus out of the fight too. You see the sleep went out, didn't manage to get anyone to sleep. Slaying Beast is back in his mech. He's charging right on in there. Lucas getting taken out of the fight here. They're just now, rolling through this point. They really are. We see a Coalescence now coming out from Stack. That is going to help their team out a fair amount here. Fish is there on point, but they, he is there by himself and he is going to get blown up. And here we go, that is it, folks. Map number three going to Circle City Cobra Crew, a score of two to one. We are still in it. Play of the game. And look at that, Omelos with another Pachi. This time, Headshot. oh man. Uh -huh. Okay, solid. Miss, hit. Get back to basics. Love to see it. And we got ourselves a game, boys, as Linda said in chat. And we are now on to push, which leaves us with the options of the usual Coliseo, Esperanza, and New Queen Street. Oh boy, I sure do love push. Listen, I like it. I think the problem is that it's a map type that, and, and uh, AJ has said this, Shaka has said the same thing, that it's really just a question of how disciplined you are with disengaging from team fights that you are yeah. going to lose. Where in other game modes, you know, it sometimes makes sense to do that hero plays and push. It really just never does. And that's the tricky part. So it'll be a question of seeing who has the discipline on the push map type to make something happen here. And this time, Circle City gets to ban. So it'll just be a question of seeing which one do they ban. I feel like overall, New Queen Street seems to be the least popular, although it's my it's my favorite personally, but... Really? I just... I, I, I like it because of the heroes that I play. You know, it's good for Junkrat, it's good for Legs, it's good for Reaper. And it looks like Coliseo will be the pick. And Coliseo is a good Ramatra map, so I bet yeah. you that's what Omelis is going to run here. See if him and... Fish switch out, or if he wants Fish to run the Ramatra, but we'll see if they a swap. It time will tell. Because I don't know how much. Yep, there it is. They are swapping them back out. As you said, 
Arnold has said it's time to put the big boy pants back on. <laughs> and time to body some people in Ramatra again, because he was doing a lot of that on uh, on Nepal for the first map. He's back to do it again. Back again. It gets meaner and meaner each time. And we're going to Coliseo. Arriving at Coliseo. In good old Italy. And there's Mr. Kevin hanging out at his starting point. I wonder why he's always up. Oh. <laughs> As I say that, the game pauses. <laughs> Oh no, Tobex lol, his internet. Well, that is unfortunate. But it do be like that sometimes. It do be like that. Because the thing is, it may not even have been his internet. It could literally just be Overwatch because, you know, esports ready game, all that stuff. So we wait and see what happens. All right, so while we are waiting for that, I'm going to see, do I have any channel points to redeem? Ooh, I can get Bronson a belly rub. Yeah. I can also give Bronson a belly rub. I, I wonder how many... Bronson a lot of belly rubs. I wonder how many belly rubs we're up to this season, because I remember Liam donated a uh, sub... Um... A, a gift sub for the first 100 belly rubs. All right, and uh, for those of you who can't uh, hear Bobinator in your ear like uh, we can, um, we just had an interesting little poll question. What is your favorite DPS hero to play on push maps or just on this map Coliseo and why. Uh, me personally, I love playing Reaper here. And pretty much on any push map, I feel like he's always good. Because realistically, it's just fun to brawl on push maps. We got we got Pancake Police saying Woodwo. Widow. Long sidelines. That is true. Yeah. Definitely not a bad not a bad pick at all. Especially I think Coliseo is a little bit harder with the sidelines, but I think other push maps like uh Esperanza has a lot of good sidelines for sniping, and so does uh, New Queen Street. I like playing Sojourn on this map just because of the long sidelines and the tight hallway, so just spamming the rail gun yeah. and building up that shot is really nice. Linda like Linda throwing us the, the hand soap, which, again, I can 100% respect that as well. I mean, it's, like you said, the tight hallways make great for just yeeting logs places. I think we have to get Rogue in. I think he's filling in for Yes, Toby. I am working on that. Okay. It is up to... Oh, no, he's already in. Okay, we're good. Cool. And we restart. So now Rogue is playing DPS in place of Tobex. So Rogue likes to play a lot of hit scans. I'll be interested to see how Fish is going to fit into that... Or we might even see the rogue Genji, which isn't half bad. Although he might tell you otherwise. But the man is very hard on himself, but his Genji is pretty decent. I kind of want to see it. Oh no, he's playing support. Okay, so they're going to put Luke's on DPS instead. That makes a lot more sense. That does make sense. And Luke's running the Reaper, which I've seen him run absolute havoc with Reaper, especially when they're running a brawly comp like this. I mean, he, he is going to have field day, especially with the paired with Ramatra, Zen, Anna. This is just a high damage comp. Fox McCumulus running the uh, Symmetra here. Once again, the swap. Okay, he's going to swap the Tracer. So that's going to allow Slaying Beast and company to make it to the robot well before Omnilus and his team are able to make it. The turret already getting taken out there by the Fire Strike and Slaying Beast. So that is going to be unfortunate for Fish. He's not going to have use of that right away. 
You see, ooh, Stag Monster getting flattened early there by Omelus Fish. Gonna help take out Astros there. Cheeto launcher. Ooh, a big sleep there from Rogue. And Slaying Beast is out of the fight. Box and Cumulus is discorded, and he is going to run away. And oh no, Max Michaels caught him after he recalled. Oh, that is honestly fuck with Max Michaels. Because killing a tracer as Zen is not easy at all. I mean, it's maybe gotten a little bit easier with the, uh, you know, the boot back kick passive, but yeah, with, like with straight his, up shots with it, yeah. His kick of doom. Yes, I, and I will. He's slaying beast discorded here. That's going to make his life pretty difficult, especially with that corpse turret. And here comes Omelus, popping Nemesis for him again, just bashing away at him, and down he goes. The purple came out from uh, Squints there, but it's probably not quite enough here. Fox and Cumulus pops the Paul's bomb. That is going to get no one. And he's in the back line. And once again, Max Michaels says, Not today, little British lady. And Omelus, despite being purple, is just in there. And he dies, but his team's still pushing Kevin along. They're going to get that first checkpoint, too. Now it looks like, oh no, Slain Beast might be able to touch. Oh, he just barely makes it there in time. And he's going to put them in the ground. And that is going to be a fight win. For Circle City Cobra Crew, Rogue being the last one to go down there. Like as, as many times I can call out the uh, the I don't know what that that ability is actually called, but any time I can just go put them in the crowd. I'm just gonna find an excuse to do it. <laughs> yeah, go for it. You know, it's, it's as is tradition. I, I think that's what it's actually called. It's called put them in the ground. For those of you who didn't hear Bobinator just say it, he put a little bit of an extra pirate twinge on it, which. I don't hate. And ooh, Luke's. Oh man, he he tried to get sneaky in the back line there, and Asterisk was there waiting for it. We see the Ramastra mirror once again happening. Slaying Beast Anomalous here. Anomalous is gonna get nano and Here comes the Annihilation going straight into the back line of Circle City Cobra Crew here. Steck and Squints just cannot get away. Down goes Squints. Anomalous looking for Steck, but not gonna find them. But in the meantime, the rest of his team's still back there on cart, fighting Slaying Beast here. And down goes Fish, but eventually Slaying Beast will get taken out of the fight. Bit of a late stagger there, honestly. But he stalled as much as he could, and his team is behind in capture progress, so that hurts. Ooh, and Omelus getting the final say here against Fox of Cumulus here. And now... He had a really good sleep on Omnus there when he was in his ult. But Steck wants to have the coalescence out, and I think just the very edge of it clipped him and him right back up. So that ult wouldn't have gotten really any value if it wasn't for that coalescence. Yeah, that is big unfortunate. And I've been in the situation as Anna where it's like popping the. Oh, and look at that! Luke's popping the double kill there. Just not quite enough as too many people on this team had already died. And uh, Max Michaels once again winning the 1v1 against Fox McCumulus. Just, I, I saw the foot come out and everything. And just, ah, oh, man, honestly, if you're Fox with Cumulus right now, you have to be a little bit mad that Teeny Robot Man has been kind of kicking your ass. A little bit. <laughs> Zen doing a full Brexit. <laughs> Damn, Linda. Did you have to do him like that with the Brexit? <laughs> and anyway. Getting back into things here, Slaying Beast gets nanoed and he gets slept. Oh, but he got woken up almost immediately. But Omelus was purple and already low, so he is going to get quite a bit of value out of that. We see your Slaying Beast popping the slow field again. Luke's is still there trying to stall. At this point, that's what his team needs. He's just to kill time on the clock here. And he is going to go down eventually. That corpse turret just giving Slaying Beast a bit of a hard time, and he's gonna eventually go down to it. Max Michael's gonna finish off Squints. Max Michael's gonna finish off Asterisk. This Zenyatta cannot be stopped, folks. He's looking for more, too. You see Fish getting the good pick there on Steck Monster late. That is gonna be very helpful. Wow. Oh, and another pick on Fox with Cumulus, who is hanging out in the back line there. At this point, Omelus and company just waiting around, not pushing the robot. Which is honestly not a bad move here. Because that way they don't have to worry about having having themselves as a team too far pushed up. Rally 
That's a strategy I think people don't necessarily use sometimes, it's just being slow when you're already ahead. And here comes Annihilation from Slaying Beast. He's right in the middle of the enemy team. The Transcendence comes up, but it's not going to be enough as long as those tendrils are touching. Slaying Beast is low, and he's going to go down with some help from the Molten Core from Fish. It's going to get another pick or two on top of it. So that really is a solid play there from Bjorn again as Lukes is going to charge on in there. He's going to get a pick on Asterisk and then just let that Torbjorn turret do a little more work here. As Fish... Gets a pick there onto Steck Monster, and Omnilus is going to bully the Tracer down. We see Slaying Beast coming out there now, trying to help defend, and Max Michaels, with some help from that Discord, is going to take Slaying Beast out of the fight. And now, once again, Kevin starting to push that robot, uh, push that barrier, rather, around these next couple of corners here. And that uphill push is going to be just painfully slow. We get into the final stretch here. In this very tight corner, Slaying Beast walking in onto the robot here. And we see Omnilus and company backed off just a little bit, and now they're going to regroup here and get a full push. Here comes another Annihilation with the Nano Assistance, followed by the Death Blossom from Lukes. Omnilus already has two picks. Stegmasta trying to get away, and he does manage to do it finally. I'm sorry, they managed to do it finally. Max Michaels is getting a pick on Slaying Beast there towards the end, and Rogue's just going to hang out on the robot. And as the progress continues to tick upward, for Bjorn again, they've got all five members of the team on the cart now. Slaying Beast is going to charge in. He's going to get nattered immediately. And then he gets slept. And Omnilus is just going to walk away and work on those supports. And there is no help for Slaying Beast now. Down goes Astris. We see Slaying Beast discorded and in a very tight predicament here. As he gets finished off with some help from the Zen and Ana here. Fox and Cumulus taken out of the fight. This cart is pushing its way into the final stretch here. Only a few meters left to go. She squints onto the Lucio, trying to get as quickly as he can, and Max Michaels is going to finish him off after he got slowed down by Omnilus. He's got the Nemesis form up. Slaying Beast is discorded. Rogue got stuck, and down he goes, but it's Slaying Beast getting taken out here. Omnilus goes down as well. It's just Fish on point. He manages to finish off Snake Monster with the hammer. <laughs> Honestly, if nothing else tonight, what an absolutely massive hammer. And look at that, two minutes to go, and 136 meters to 36 in favor of Bjorn again. And they have got plenty of space to group up along with that short spawn here. And they'll probably be meeting Circle City Cobra Crew right around the center starting point here for this next fight. Oh man, freaking Linda, Circle City throwing for content, that is rude. This is very rude, and I do not believe it. We see Slaying Beast popping, going onto the Diva here. And here comes the Transcendence here from Max Michaels, allowing his team to gain some extra space here. And here comes the, in, the tr Annihilation from Omnilus. He's got quite a lot of targets, including a purpled Slaying Beast. Down goes Squints. Asterisk now in his line of sight, but he goes down after getting stuck by the Sticky Bombs. Fox and Cumulus did eventually go down here. Lucas is just on point, just kind of hanging out. Going to see if he pops his ult or not here. He does have it. He is going to hold on to it. And honestly, that's the play here. They've got four ults on the side of uh, of Bjorn again right now. So realistically, with a minute to go, they can throw the kitchen sink at this fight and win it pretty handily as long as they're smart about it. I'm oh, sorry, they got... Yeah, and they've got, they've got Nano to go with it. They've got... They've got... Uh, Molten Core as well, and we see the Nano coming onto Omnus, and it looks like that was all they needed to turn this fight around. 38 seconds to go on the clock, and Circle City has got one last chance to try and make something happen here before overtime. They're doing the smart thing, they're just leaving the bot. Remaining. Yep, there it is. It just makes it that much harder for Circle City to get back to it if they're not pushing the bot closer to their spawn. And honestly, th this is what makes push tricky is that it's not necessarily about getting all the way to the end the way some people want to it's just about being the team that outthinks the other team it's the it is it is a true game of 4d chess in in the least and what a play there by slaying beast pretty much eating that entire ult he's gonna pop the bomb see the molten core comes out against three what a play from slaying beast Four now as Lukes goes down with some help from Vox Cumulus. Omnilus is there by himself in overtime here, but he does not have the help 
And it's going to be very hard for him to get any kills, and he's not going to get out. What a hero play by Slaying Beast with that self-destruct. Honestly, if that's not play of the game for this map, I will be very surprised. We're going to see that the barrier is going to make its way up to this final little double turn here. As uh, Bjorn again and company regrouping. You see Luke's kind of taking a peek down here on the side, trying to see where everybody is. And honestly, that, that D.Va eat of the Reaper ult made a huge difference. And here comes Annihilation from Omelus. He's just standing there and blocking. We see Squids trying to boop him off the side, and he just takes so much damage, he's not able to make anything happen. It seems like his team was just kind of split off from him here. And right now, we are getting very close to the last fight territory, regardless, because Fox and Cumulus did get picked off here. He does have the forward spawn, but that is still a very long walk for him in overtime here. We see Squints does take out Fish's turret. So right now, Slaying Beast and company have quite a bit going for them here. Well, they don't really have any ults. So you see Rogue is pretty close to Nano, and Max Michaels does have more his... Uh, uh, de his, sorry, his uh, Transcendence here, and oh man, Luke's tried to get up in behind and do something cheeky and he just wasn't able to do it, and he does get punished for it pretty hard. Squint's getting purpled here in the slow field, and here comes the Transcendence from Max Michaels. It's going to allow the team to push forward a little bit. Here comes the Diva Bomb again. It's going to get three. Another play. Slaying Beast absolutely destroying it with these Diva Bombs right now. Luke's trying to teleport away, and he does manage to get out. And in overtime here, there are just a few meters left. It's gonna take, be down to the wire here to see if Bjorn again can make something happen and stop this final push here from Circle City Cobra Crew. Here comes the slow field, it's right on point. The Pulse Bomb manages to get rogue. Even though it was stuck on Omelus' shield, that is a big unfortunate. The Diva is the mech, that is a huge bonus for uh, Bjorn again right now. Omelus goes down. The Suzu from Max Michaels now trying to make something happen here. Omelus, is, uh, sorry, Fox and Cumulus gets taken out of the fight. Sec Monster with the Coalescence, though, is going to get two big kills there. And we see oh, Max Michaels getting taken out of the fight. And the card finally pushes its way forward in overtime. And that is another map victory for Circle City Cobra Crew. Two to two. It's all tied up, folks. Boy, have we got ourselves a bash. That was quite the comeback, especially on push. We're having to push that far in overtime. You know, typically if you lose one person, it's pretty much over. But these hero players and slaying beasts just secured this for them. Look at that. Just that was nobody insane. able to get away. Oh, man. And then the fourth pick there on Rogue with the punch at the end. Man, just mwah, icing on the cake. And here we go, folks. It's map five time. We're back at where we started with uh, a little bit of King of the Hill action. And I believe Oasis was banned, which means uh, Lijong Tower is the map. I believe so. it is. So here we go. Oh, Tobex Lull is back. He's back. He has returned from the grave. And, uh, yeah, it's just about that time. <laughs> Fox Cumulus, that bomb just created a new section of the BMI chart. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, they're just absolutely huge. I mean, two bombs and he killed six people with them. Stack Monster, already ready to go. Omnilus just waiting to see what he's going to slide in here. See, we've got Rogue in the lineup now. And we got Omelus on tank. It looks like we have Luke's and Tobex Lol on DPS. And then Rogue and Max Michaels on support. So Fish going to be riding the bench for map number five here. And with that change, I believe we are just waiting for Mr. Omnilus to press that button. As map number five is proving to be a real nail biter here. And I'm fully expecting it to be three three rounds. Absolutely. It and, is going the distance. And Ro uh, Bobanair, to answer your question, I don't think Rogue was a sub. I think he just showed up late. Oh, uh, yeah. 
At least I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I think he yeah. is actually on Omnilus' team. He is. So, yeah. That, that That's my suspicion. And look at that, up to 18 viewers now. So we love to see it. Thanks for joining us. Feel free to subscribe, or at least, you know, hit that follow button. We do love the support. <laughs> and Astros... <laughs> that's right, for those of you who don't know, um, Astros and Omnilus are married. And Astros saying that if her team wins, Omnilus has to buy her McDonald's. <laughs> and Omnilus is just like, nah. <laughs> Rude. What a terrible husband. All right, here we go. Omnilus is just going to go back on the Reinhardt here. So we've got Rogue and Lucio, Max Michaels on the Ana. And we've got the Sim Soldier. Ooh, an early pick on Stack Monster. Omnilus saying he wants this over quick. He's going to just dive right in there. Bully the hell out of Slaying Beast. Max Michaels did get picked up by Astros on the Junkrat there. But as of right now, the point securely in the favor of Bjorn again. As it unlocks in just a couple seconds here. We see Fox Accumulus running his, te his uh, trusty Tracer. And the point is captured now. Slaying Beast and Company just now getting back. Fox Accumulus starting to head off on a little flank here to bother the supports. Trobex Lull is there to help though, along with Rogue. Meanwhile, Omelus just swinging away on Slaying Beast and Stack Monster here. A nice nade coming in there from Max Michaels to help his team out. And, ooh, Astros getting a pick there on Luke's. Just those stray pills. And Omelus already with the shatter. That's going to flatten Stack Monster with a follow up charge. He does die though. The Slaying Beast just kind of swinging at him as he, do as he charged in there. Huh? Slaying Beast is purple and low, but it looks like he is going to manage to hold the shield long enough for that to wear off. I get some healing from his supports here. And we see Fox Cumulus already with the bomb. He managed to hit uh, the wall. So that is unfortunately not going to be the move for him. And we see uh, already a Sim ult coming out here from Tobex Lull. And right now just kind of hiding in that little crevice in the backside of Boyd. Here comes a tire from Asterisk. It's going to get one. Still a very important pick there. Taking Rogue out of the fight. Omelus and Luke's are going to get followed up on here. And we see Coalesce. It's coming up from Squints. There's so many ults flying around right now. Max Michael's the last one to go down. 56% capture progress, and I swear we saw about eight ults in that fight altogether. Oh yeah, it was it was an ult fest for sure. <laughs> Flatbed Fred Omnis haunts me in my dreams. <laughs> and yes, Patty Chef, they are in fact married. They've been married for I want to say a good year now. A little over a year. Yeah. And uh, look at that, Squint's gonna take a nice really pick on Tobex while swapping to the May, which I definitely don't hate, especially with running this Brawly comp with the Reinhardt and the Soldier. I almost would like to see Loot swap to the Reaper, but I understand running the Soldier against the Junkrat at the same time. Just, I I know his Reaper is good. I think that's why I just, I just want to see more of him playing it. And we see, ooh, a big wall there. Unfortunately, he didn't get what they wanted. The block coming from Omnilus gonna stop that shatter from Slaying Beast in his tracks. The beat was huge, but Slaying Beast still did get Tobex while there. As uh, Slaying Beast tries to get away, Omnilus just swinging on him with all his might. Luke's gonna get two big picks there, but it's not quite enough as Omnilus goes down. And Luke's trying to stall the point there, but he was by himself. And that is gonna be Rogue there trying to get out. And that he will. Ooh, Tobex low. The nice pick on Fox McCumulus. And oh, see, now Slaying Beast getting trapped out by the wall. And the, uh, the, the big freeze, but it's not going to be quite enough to kill him just yet here. See, Omnilus also just trying to shield off his supports from healing him. And now the Coalescence coming out from Squints here. As Sec Monster tries to help his Reinhardt stay in this fight here. This May Freeze being quite troublesome. And Slaying Beast missing the charge there. He's gonna There's got playing ring around the Rosie here. And Slaying Beast gets charged out of his shatter. And now he's frozen in the melt. It's just him and Stack, and they're both gonna go down here in short order. Squint's the only one left alive. He's gonna stall that point for just as long as he possibly can. You see Fox is gonna pop that recall. Squints is still on point, they just haven't looked at him yet. Now into overtime here. Fox Cumulus gonna go down. It's just Squints. He's gonna get blown up by Luke's. He's gonna run a junk rat of his own here. And there it is, the point getting recaptured. <laughs> and yes, Linda with this correct charged out of shatter into a blizzard. Honestly, the main tank experience in Overwatch 2. And that was really good, well played from Circle City 2 because they stalled that out all the way to 9-9. That was a really long fight, so. Uh, we're gonna get really up and dig their heels in here. 
Oh no, he didn't manage to shatter the tire, but the beat is there from Rogue right as Astra's tried to detonate. So huge plays there from the supports of Bjorn again. Down goes Steck Monster. Lux did eventually lose the Junkrat 1v1 to Astra's, but Squints goes down here. Max Michael's getting taken out. So right now, Rogue is the only support here for uh, Bjorn again. Box of Cumulus going down though, as he was the only player left from Circle City Cobra Crew. And in overtime, it looks like Steck Monster is not gonna make it. So that is round number one in the books. And we move on to either Garden or Night Market. Let's see which one it is. I'm putting my money on Night Market. To one. Oh. oh. And. Oh. Oh, there goes your money. Uh, Big sad. Lost all my money. <laughs> my my money. All of its god. Knowledge is Little little Mr. Krabs action for you. <laughs> So here we go, round number two. Luke's back on the Soldier 76 here. Tobex a little on the sim. Definitely gonna be seeing some cheeky sim strats out of Bjorn again here. And I love to see it. Just teleporting straight to point. Wait for the sim teleporter. There it is, they're all on point. Just waiting patiently. The turrets are set up. Amelis gonna try and charge Slaying Beast going a little to his left there. Now Amelis just swinging away, just letting his, letting everything happen, backing up the point. We see the fair coming up from Fox Pinos here, which is definitely going to get some value at this point, especially if they were expecting to get some good boot kills. Uh, Circle City would be, that is. But right now, not able to get a hold. Oh no, as I say that, he gets a pick on Max Michaels, so that's actually huge. You see, Bjorn again does get the first cap here, but as of right now, they are still technically down a player, so that is going to hurt. And we see that Fox and Cumulus Pharah just floating around. Slaying Beast going to take Luke's out of the fight there with a well-placed hammer swing. Amal is eventually going down. A very long, drawn-out fight here. Neither team really getting completely eliminated until right now. And that is going to be a flippity-flop here for Circle City Cobra Crew. <laughs> Span this tree for round three. Honestly, you know what? We love to see it. I want to see round three. Let's have maximum Overwatch action. John Overwatch would be proud. John Overwatch would be very proud. Here we go. See a new path being taken here by Bjorn again, just trying to avoid that fair action. A huge shatter from Slaying Beast. He walked right past Omelus. He had no chance of stopping it, but he got purpled. The barrage coming up from Fox McCubulus, and he's going to barrage his own face off. Slaying Beast goes back to Rez but then gets shattered immediately after Squints goes out of the fight. You see Snake Monster also getting taken out by Omelus. Slaying Beast goes down. The tire does not manage to get anyone. And down goes Asterisk with a nice charge kill there from Omelus. And that's another flip. And once again, Bjorn again in control here. And look at that, Chaka Khan subscribed for 51 months. Coming up on the six year mark here. Pretty soon. I mean, that is just, you love to see it. Absolute gaming levels of dedication. The man's been here since season one. And he's never missed a month of subscription. Which reminds me, I should actually, I think I my subscription actually lapsed. I need to, I need to fix that. But yeah, subscribe. Give us money so that we can donate. Ooh, Slave, he's getting cut off there by that Maywall. There's a huge play there by Tobex Lull. We've, seen, we've got three ults coming up on the side of Bjorn again, so it's just a question of which one do they pop first. I think it's probably going to be the Nano onto Omnilus, if I had to guess. Either that, or they're just waiting for that Blizzard. Ooh, Mac Fox and Cumulus going down here. Slaying Beast goes down to the purple. Astros goes down. Squints is going to be there try to do something, but, oh man, Omnilus died to the total mayhem. <laughs> I think he just got body blocked or something. That is... Ugh, man. <laughs> Honestly... Yeah, <laughs> Asterisk just hitting him with the lull. It's rude. Here we go. It's last fight territory for Circle City Cobra Crew. It's now or never, do or die. Slaying Beast will have Shatter relatively soon, but there are five ults. And there's the Shatter from Omelus. Slaying Beast is trapped by the Maywall. He's by himself. His team can't do anything to help him. And that is the end, folks. Round two comes to a close, and Bjorn again are your match winners. A three to two victory.
And here's tonight's final play of the game. Once again, Omnilus showing up to show people how it's done with the large hammer man. Oh, the vacuum pin on squints, the fire strike, the swingage, the swingage, just murdering people. Oh, the turnaround and the 180. And there you have it, folks. That game comes to a close. Thank you all so much for watching. And don't forget, we've got two, count them, two more matches this week coming up tomorrow night and Friday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 8 p.m. Central. So be sure to tune in for those games at our regularly scheduled Bat Time and Bat Channel. Uh, tomorrow's match will be Damn I Love Frogs and No Cap. And then Friday we have Precious Booty facing down Squirtin' Turtles. And with that, this is Bang on My Drums here for Static, Bobinator, and the whole Find Me Alpha Overwatch League. Say, we'll catch you on the flip side.